Alrighty. Hey gang, welcome back. Well, it's October, well, almost October, I guess it's the last day of September or so. And I'm going to tear that thing apart. <laughs> it's really hard to do. It looks really nice right now and it's uh, all ready to work for me for the winter, but enough of you have asked to see a batch box in place and how it is living with it, and I'm going to do it. So, man, I really don't want to tear into that thing. <laughs> but I'm sure once I start, I'll be, I'll be excited about it. So, uh, here I go. Um, I'll check back in with you guys periodically through this process. Alrighty, wish me luck. I'm going to make a mess. <laughs> okay, I'm like three minutes into this job. <laughs> and I'm almost done with the first part. <laughs> it's remarkably easy. Boy, it looked so good, but it was just a pile of dirt and uh, came apart no problem. So here we go, tearing things up. Okay, so I got it pretty well cleared out of there. Jeez, maybe it only took like 20 minutes and I'm gonna go build a mold for my new batch core here. So I'll be back and we'll fit her in there and see how it fits. All right, see you in a bit. All righty. Welcome back. Well, I got my mold for my new batch box core ready to go. That didn't take long, just 45 minutes or so. But I wanted to show you something. I was clearing out the burn tunnel here, and uh, I hit a piece of this. I mean, I've been taking out a bunch of it, but this is the original casting material. This is this was just clay and perlite, and this has been on the burn tunnel now for three full winters. Um, and uh, this is before I started using the furnace cement and before I started using fiberglass. So this is a really primitive mix. And I just wanted to show it to you guys. It's I'm really impressed with it. So it looks like the perlite is mostly gone. But what I'm left with is this really light sort of clay foam. And it's hard to tell, but I'm trying to break it right there with that one hand. And I can break it. Um, but it is, it is really quite solid. You know, like I said, I always say the wood will wear it away. Um, but it's a lot harder than you would expect. It feels like pumice is what it feels like. Um, at any rate, I just wanted to show you that. I'm going to try and break it now. There we go. Told it is breakable. Um, but it's really incredibly durable. So I don't know if I can get a good shot here. Um, but yeah, I still believe in that mix. You know, around the wood feed area, it does get worn away. Um, I've heard of folks having uh, issues inside of the burn tunnel and stuff, but you know, I reach my hand in there every now and then during the season and stick patches where it might be wearing away. And once stabilized, it seems like it's just held up just fine. I'm really having to work at it, actually, to, to knock it out of there, um, which is where I'm ch chipping away an area for the port in P in the Peter's batch box design. So there we go. Just want to show you that. And here is my mold and it's going to go in there <laughs> like that, but better. <laughs> I got a little bit of chipping to do here. So uh, we'll uh, get back to you here shortly when we're casting. Okay. See you in a bit. Okay. So there it is. The mold is fit into the opening I made for it. You can see the barrel behind there. I had to excavate all the way back to it. Um, but that's a 20 inch long firebox. So I can, I'll be able to fit plenty of fuel in there. And uh, let's take a look at the, where I excavated so you guys can see how that original core held up. Again, this was a more basic uh, material than I show in my video. This did not have the furnace cement or the fiberglass. This was just fire clay and perlite. And uh, man, it's doing great. You can really see, like this is the cob that was around it. Here is the original casting. And it is in really good shape. I was able to uh, really carve at it. It's kind of soft, um, but it's held together really well. It doesn't um, crumble or fall apart. It still has a lot of structure. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm incredibly pleased with it. So, um, 
that's kind of a neat follow-up. You can really see the outline of it. And you can see when I dig at it here, it's, like I said, it's soft, um, but it's quite well stuck together and, and uh, yeah, I think it's great. Anyways, there goes the phone. So I'm going to get this casting going. Alrighty, so I decided I was going to put a window on top. I'm going to, so I put a little window frame blocking there, and I'm ready to cast. So probably won't get any footage of this part, uh, because I'm going to be muddy, I'm going to be messy. But um, I'm just going to mix up some refractory, a, a castable insulated refractory, straight out of the bag, no additives. Um, and I'm just going to pack it all around that thing. I take that thing out, put some underneath, and make a bedding area, and then I'm going to try and pack it around that port piece and slide that thing back in there, and I'll probably use a little stick to try and work it all into place um, and just work all around it. So I'll uh, turn the video back on here when I get her all done and, and um, show you guys what it looks like, and then we'll let it cure and hopefully light her off tomorrow. Okay, see you in a bit. Alrighty, so that's done. It's cast in there. It's a little cattywampus, <laughs> but that should be okay. I don't think we'll notice once it's all cobbed in. And uh, put a little bit of fiberglass strand over the top on that bridge there and tried to give it some tensile strength and tie it together. We'll see how that goes. I think I'm gonna have a bit of an issue back in there by the port. Um, I wasn't able to really get a bunch of refractory in there, so I will probably have to stick some in there by hand once I burn out the the mold. I guess we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, so I'll wait till tomorrow, let it cure. I still got a fabricated door and a P channel, um, but I went pretty smoothly. I think it's gonna be fine. We'll see how it goes. Okay, I'll keep you posted. Thanks for